So today we're talking with Kelly Norris, who's been in the real estate industry for over 30 years, is a former owner and broker of a Sotheby's International Realty franchise, and he's a luxury agent who just took a $9 million listing this week. Kelly, how are you doing today? Doing great, Malcolm. Yeah, great, man. Me. Absolutely. I'm super excited for this conversation. Real Broker just launched their own uh, luxury division, and a lot of people are talking about luxury. And so I really want to pick your brain about how somebody can break into that industry. Do you mind sharing with me, you know, as a luxury agent, what do you think are like your top three sources of leads into your, your own business? Okay, that's a great question. Well, first of all, let me tell you that I haven't signed the nine million dollar listing yet, okay. but it's it's uh, I'm going to get it. So I just don't want to jinx myself. Um, but he's a prior client, and okay. um, and that's a good uh, segue into the idea of farming your circle and the people you've done business with. Um, and honestly, the m my biggest source of um, leads and stuff in that in that in the luxury space or any space for that matter is keeping in contact with the people that you've done business with in the past and then also um expanding that by um getting to know them and the people that they run with so that you mm -hmm. know i can expand that circle so yeah i mean that's that's going to be a big thing especially now i think it's um with with things being more um you know, the, 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 uh, listing side of the house is going to be a lot more important now than ever. And so I think that's, that's probably going to be an really, really important thing to do for everybody. Yeah. I mean, imagine being in for 30 years, you must have hundreds of past clients over that time period. And like, you know, at this point, just farming those clients really is all that you need to do. And so how do you, how do you systematize that? How do you stay in front of your past clients like that and continue those relationships? Well, it's, you know, honestly, it's, you know, that's one part of real that's so, so good is they, is we can use lofty now, which is used to be chime. And before I was using another CRM, but, um, I, because we get such an amazing act with them by dripping them, I, it's all done on autopilot. I don't have to do anything really. I mean, other than I have, a particular kind of, of client that I, that are really at the top of who I want to keep in contact with their friends and stuff. And I'll text them. And then I have lofty living, literally telling me when to contact them. So, so, cause if, if, if I have to remember it all, I won't. And right, so it literally tells me when to do things and it's kind of nice. I set that all up at the front. And, um, and honestly, I think that's a great way for people to spend some time right now is to when they put things in their CRM and it doesn't have to be lofty, it can be whatever anyone's using, um, because there's a lot of good ones and, but it's really important to set up those systems up front and yeah. it's really, really good use of time. One of the best pieces of advice somebody gave me early on in my career is like, use a CRM and every single contact you have in there, set a reminder of when you need to follow up, call, email, text them. And then soon your, your job says every day you log into your CRM and okay, this is who I need to contact today. These 10 people, these five people. Right. I mean, and then it, it, and it'll tell you, you know, you don't have to like throw up on people, which is what I like to say, you know, but it says, you know, your top five people to contact. So whether it's a text or a phone call or an email, but, you know, I've got it set up where the emails go out pretty much automatically. I get less traction from those than I used to. I think email, if you look at people's phones these days, they have like 3000 unchecked emails. And right. so um, that's less effective. But I think the phone call and the texts are the, the way to go. But, you know, again, it, it reminds me to do those things. And, I, and it's just like a daily thing. It's just like eating breakfast. You know, it's like something you do and then. You know, and uh, it's and that's exactly what happened with this listing that I'm getting ready to take is I contacted him a few months ago just to, you know, say hello. We have some commonalities. We we both uh, are into aviation and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so he's he's he was a, he's a pilot. And so all of a sudden I get a call and it's like, hey, thanks for reminding me. I need for you to come out and look at my house. I want to list it. So that's basically how that happened. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I mean, even the emails, even if they don't open them, like they're just seeing your name, seeing your brand, you're seeing top of mind, a lot of, a lot of value in that.
So yes. you've been reaching out to him probably for years, staying in front of him. He, you know, reached back out to you when he's ready to sell. What does that listing appointment look like for you? And I'm sure like a past clients are the easiest listing appointments, but I guess in general, when you go on a luxury listing appointment, how do you kind of structure that? What's your formula for that? Well, it's, you know, it's coming from um, the Sotheby's brand and I was with them for, you know, 14 years. Um, they've got the whole luxury thing dialed. I mean, they, they're, I've got to say they're, they're, they're super high end. It's a good company. And, um, you know, and what I did is I learned a lot from, from that whole thing, a lot of print media, a lot of, a lot of really high glossy, um, good looking, um, handouts that you give also the publications that you can go into. Once you get the listing, you've got to be able to advertise those into homes that have, you know, affluency. And so that you, you want to make sure and get that in front of those people. So from that standpoint, I mean, that's, uh, from a listing, taking the listing, you want to go in ahead of time, print out all those things, have all the things that you're going to do and, and be able to lay them all out and say, this is the plan. And then what you, what I do is I say, you know, here are the things I'm going to do. And when we do them, that you can hold me accountable to that. Mm -hmm. So they can just check them off as I go through the, through okay. the process. Yeah. And so if you were to get, let's say a $450,000 house, uh, which probably not, not very big in your market, let's, let's say $500,000 house in your market. How would you market that differently than a $9 million house? Is there much of a difference between how you market those two properties? Well, the process is the same, but I mean, obviously you're going, you're going to market it completely differently. You know, I mean, so 450 in my market is probably on the lower end of the scale. Yeah. Um, and yeah. So, I mean, the average sales price in my area is typically between 800 and thousand and 1.2 million roughly. And, and that's been changing a little bit, but in the, in the lower end, you know, you, you want to advertise it. You, you want to do the photography the same way, maybe not as in depth. You don't want to necessarily do aerial photography, that sort of thing, like what we're going to do on this listing that I'm telling you about. But you, you want to do all those things because these people are hiring you to do the same thing, which is sell their home. And so it doesn't matter how, you know, affluent you are, you, they still want, you know, your best a game. And so you have to, you know, have a different approach, um, as far as how much money you're going to spend to sell that listing as you would be like, for instance, the one that I'm going to list here soon. Um, you know, I'll be out several thousand dollars on photography and, wow. and yeah. So, I mean, I'm going to plus, you know, to market that to people, um, it has, you have to be able to, to be found in publications, um, that the, the affluent get, you know? And so, it's a different thing, but at the same time, at the end of the day, you want to take care of your clients because, yeah. you know, like, like I have always said, you know, I mean, the money we make in this business is, is a byproduct of helping people. And yeah. so that's, 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 it's, it's true no matter what price point we're at. So all the steps are the same. It's really just your marketing budget is going to be just a lot higher for a, a higher end listing like that. Yes. It, yeah. And, and, you know, and a lot of, you know, just to, to your earlier question about, you know, I mean, you know, about luxury, the luxury market, full disclosure, I don't, it's not like I'm 100% luxury agent. That's not the case. But when I do get those listings, um, you have to kind of jump into a different category as far as where you're going to market them and, and the money you're going to spend, you've got to, you know, you've got to put your money where your mouth is type of thing, because, these people that are going to be a, a potential buyer for that property are looking in, in, in different places than the people at the lower end of the scale. So can, can you talk to me a little bit more about that. Um, is that's a kind of a world that I'm not familiar with. Um, like, do you, do you market to people in other cities and other luxury markets around the country? And what kind of publications are you, are you focused on with this? Well, I mean, the biggest ones are like, for instance, you can go onto the New York times and mm -hmm. you can do, you can post a listing on the New York times or the wow. wall street journal. Um, both of those, you know, the wall street journal is a great one. Um, and New York times and they, there's a, a real estate section and you can post your real estate. Just, it almost looks like the MLS or like Zillow inside of those publications. I'm not taking a print ad in those that would be astronomically expensive, but, um, 
you can place those ads inside those and get a lot of traction from that. For oh, sure. interesting. Okay. Yeah. And so if somebody, let's say their average price point, you know, 800,000 or so, what they're kind of like at the average price point in their market. They want to break into the luxury market for whatever that price point looks like for them. How, how, what can an agent do to kind of start taking those steps to break into a luxury market? That's a good question. I mean, you know, honestly, and it's not something that can be done like overnight. It's something you have to build upon. And really, it all comes down to, you know, I like to say, you know, fish where the fish are. Mm -hmm. And so you um, have to go to the places that these people go to, your country clubs and, and different things like that. And you have to start showing up in person and meeting these people and and start going to events and you know philanthropy events where the people and and you know that sort of thing and become friends with them and you become um you know and 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 then you because they know you and they associate you with the things that they do then they think about you when they're when the time comes to sell real estate that that's honestly there, there's no better way to break into the luxury uh, market than to um you've got to figure out a way to associate with them in their circles that's it's it's essential to do that yeah that makes sense he, here in annapolis maryland we have yacht clubs there's a whole bunch of yacht clubs and you know agents that try to join those just to kind of kind of get get their foot in the door and start building those relationships okay so it's yeah. it sounds like it is more relationship based almost I mean, it's almost um, you. You can get luxury listings um, using um, electronic means like you know YouTube and and you know Facebook marketing yeah. and all that stuff. But it's more of a shotgun approach. I think that you know in luxury or you, you've got to find them and and um, associate with them in person. Yes. Yeah. And so. One question I have for you, being that you've been in this industry for 30 years, you've seen a lot of changes in this industry. I mean, you were you're an agent back when the MLS was just like a, a book, you know, with printed uh, things on there. And you've probably seen a lot of changes in your time. What are some of the bigger changes that you're seeing in our industry moving forward? Some of the bigger trends that you're seeing? Well, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, I'm originally from Missouri. So, I mean, I got my license there. And then didn't move to California until 2010 or 2011. I don't remember somewhere in that range, but um, things constantly are changing. I mean, I rem I remember writing my first contract. It was like three pages long. Yeah. And 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 now it's like 30 pages long. So, um, but from a from a lead generation standpoint, that sort of thing, I think things have really become electronic. Um, more than anything. And I think, honestly, I think that people um, and agents um, probably rely on that too much. Um, I, I think that you can get myopic in your approach. It's like, well, everybody's on the internet. Well, that's true. And you can certainly get leads that way. And, 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 but I think people have overcompensated. I mean, they literally forget that this is a people business. Yeah. And, you know, and so I think it's really important. So that's the biggest change I've seen in, in all the years I've been doing this is that people are relying too much on their phones and on their um, lead generation uh, systems and, and everything online where they literally need to go out and meet people, <laughs> you yeah. know, because that really, I mean, if you're going to be in this business, people are the, our business. And so you have to find these people and meet them in person. Does that mean you have to like, you know, go out to every single event. No, no, no. But at the, at the same time, it's got to be part of what you do. And um, I think that that's been lost. And I, and I think that if agents really want to, to um, take their business to the next level or they're struggling, they need to go out and start meeting people and they'll be shocked at, at how, how that affects their business. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And like, you're a great example of somebody that you're leveraging technology to help you build deeper relationships with people. Yes. You, know, you have your CRM that is doing some of the automated follow-up, but you are still using that to uh, build those relationships and keep those relationships going. Yeah, it's essential. It's essential. Yeah, yeah. I love it. 
Well, Kelly, if anybody wanted to follow you um, or get a hold of you, what's the best way to reach out? Um, you can find me on my YouTube channel. It's Real Broker Kelly Norris um, and um, or just kellynorris.com. That's my website. Those are the best things. Um, you know, the YouTube channel it has links to all my other social channels. So it's pretty much everything's there. All right. So. Perfect. I'll have a link to it down in the description below. Kelly, thank you so much for your time today. It's really fascinating. All right. Thank you. Time.